how much of that is water remains an important question. Why do we care, really? I mean, if it's ice or water, well, because at least everywhere on Earth where there is water, there is life. Of course, an important goal for NASA, an important interest of the public, is is there life out there? Are we alone? Is life common? We're not talking about fish and whales, but we're talking about microscopic life, microscopic organisms. Could they exist within Europa? That's a lot of the driver to understand what Europa might be like beneath its ice. So we know it has a skin of H2O, but from the gravity data, we don't know if there's liquid there. I'm gonna argue in a little bit that from the geology, we think there's liquid there. But the geologists, such as myself, are kind of scooped by the folks who study magnetic fields, of all things. Because it turns out Europa and a couple of the other moons of Jupiter, Ganymede and Callisto, are acting like conductors. So what's that story? Europa is orbiting within the gigantic magnetic field of Jupiter. If you could see the magnetic influence of Jupiter in the sky, it would be uh, about as big as seen from Earth as the full moon is. That's the magnetic influence, the magnetic field of Jupiter. So here are the satellites. Here's Io, here's Europa. They're minding their own business, trying to orbit around Jupiter, and they're Im immersed in this immense magnetic field. Jupiter's acting like a giant magnet. When the, when the Galileo spacecraft made its flybys of Europa, it was realized that there was something going on near Europa, some sort of local magnetic field. And at first it was thought, well, maybe Europa has its own magnetic field. But strangely, that magnetic field is in the plane of the equator of Jupiter, in the orbital plane of the, of the satellites, in the plane of Europa's equator. That's a little odd. but. Not unheard of, okay. But then another time when the Galileo spacecraft flew by Europa, the magnetic field had reversed. North had become south and south had become north. Well, that seems pretty weird. So what's going on? What's going on is that here's Europa minding its own business, orbiting around Jupiter. We're looking at Jupiter and a representation of the magnetic field lines coming out of Jupiter. This is a representation of the Io Taurus. Io is kind of a litter bug, and its <laughs> volcanoes spew dust and gas, which um, forms a donut-like, donut-shaped region around Jupiter. So that's kind of marking uh, the influence of Io. Well, this magnetic field of Jupiter is tilted by 10 degrees, okay? And that's and this torus is, is tilted with it. So sometimes Europa and the other satellites find themselves above the magnetic equator, if you like, of Jupiter. So the magnetic field kind of has an equator like this, but the satellites are orbiting in the real equator of the, of the planet. But the magnetic field has its own equator and that's tilted. And Jupiter is rotating pretty quickly, once in 10 hours. So here's this tilted magnetic field. It's rotating with Jupiter every 10 hours. And being tilted, it kind of flops around. So this is what it would look like half an orbit later, that tilted magnetic field. And look where Europa is. Now it's below this magnetic equator. So Europa and the other satellites are feeling a magnetic field from Jupiter that alternately points outward when it's above the magnetic equator and then inward when the satellite is below the magnetic equator. And the, the satellite hasn't done much except orbit a tiny bit around, but Jupiter is rotating around and its magnetic field with it every 10 hours. So about half that time the satellite, later, the satellite is feeling a magnetic field opposite it, that it just felt a little while ago. And what the, the team studying the magnetometer data from Galileo found is that magnetic field of Europa was flipping with, to compensate, to oppose the magnetic field of Jupiter. So Europa's magnetic field would be pointing this way, and then it would point that way to oppose the magnetic field of Jupiter. So the bottom line, what this story is all about, 
is that Europa, to do that, Europa had to be behaving as a conductor, conducting electricity, essentially. Well, what can behave as a conductor within an icy moon? It had to be shallow, the magnetometry folks said, except salty water. Salty water conducts electricity very well. It's either that or Europa's made of copper, which it's not. Sure, it has an iron core, but that was too deep. So that's really the discovery of the ocean, comes from this magnetometer data. And then strangely, that was found at Callisto, which is kind of a dead world, and at Ganymede as well. Ganymede has its own magnetic field, but it has one of these induced magnetic fields as well. So oceans, it turns out, seem to be common within big satellites, but we'll talk later about why Europa's is really pretty special. So there seems to be an ocean at some depth below the ice here. And as a geologist, I want to understand how deep that ocean is. Does it communicate with the surface? That is, does it leak onto the surface through fractures or something? Is there a way of exploring? Can we get through this ice someday if we land something on Europa? Or are there other indirect ways that we can understand how deep that ocean is, what it's like, and is it a habitable place? Could microbes? Uh, get by there and be happy there? Is it a place where we might be able to search for life? So here's what Europa looks like if you unwrap it into a map. And say so we talk about these lines, these linear features. Well, what, what could they tell us about, well, not just the history of Europa, but about whether there could be an ocean beneath? Well, geologists like to map things. So the first thing you can do is map these, whoops, Oh, that wasn't what I thought it was going to be. That's okay. Let me, let me zoom in on these, on these features first. So we were able to get some super high resolution pictures with a Galileo spacecraft of what this kind of terrain looks like. And it kind of looks like this. It kind of looks like a bowl of spaghetti or something with ridges crisscrossing one on top of another. So these things are ridges, but not just one. They kind of travel in pairs across the surface. What the heck's that about? This doesn't look like any other moon that, we, that we've seen anywhere else. Uh, what about these spots on the surface of Europa? Here's a zoom in on one of those. It's as if something dark kind of flowed out and covered up those ridges. Um, here are some of those ridges, and they look like they've almost been melted away or somehow. This looks like a, a sizzling hamburger to me a little bit. So something strange has come along and almost cooked Europa's surface. So um, when we look at these ridged planes, we want to see, we want to map out these lines, these linear features, try to understand how they formed, try to understand their patterns, what they look like, how they crisscross one another. There's a lot of information in there. Uh, some of them, look at this guy. I mean, that's pretty weird. You don't see that anywhere else in the solar system. What the heck is doing that? Ah, so here's the map I thought I was going to show earlier. Here we go. So we can map out these global features on Europa's surface and then try to understand the stresses that form them. So how was the ice deformed, stretched, in order to form these features? because they sure seem like they're cracks. And when we look at them close up, we can see that they've opened up, essentially. Um, well, the red areas here are predictions where the stresses should be pulling the surface apart, tension. And the blue uh, lines are areas where the surface would be pushed together, compression, and a map of these linear features. And if the linear features are perpendicular, to the red tick marks, then it's kind of a good fit. That is, then the tension could have pulled apart a fracture like this. So it's a decent fit to this stress pattern. So we, we come up with ideas for how the surface might have been ripped apart, and then try to compare them to what we see and see how good the fit is. Well, what is this stress field that seems to be a decent fit to Europa's features? It's the stress field if Europa's ice shell is rotating relative to the interior, slipping relative 
to the interior. So this is a weird idea, and people thought, well, let's just try that. Maybe that'll fit, and, and it does. So what this tells us is that the ice shell isn't firmly attached, if you like, firmly, firmly joined to what's underneath. It seems to somehow be lubricated by something underneath and very slowly pulled relative to the interior of the satellite. So most moons always face their parent planet, and our moon does this, and, and so if, if that's the sun, uh, uh, sorry, if that's the earth and I'm the moon, the moon be going around and always facing the same face toward the earth. Um, but Europa's ice shell seems to be not quite synchronous but slowly slipping like this. So that's a piece of evidence for an ocean within Europa.